Great pleasure now to be joined by strategic thinker and top policy maker Brahma Chalani, an author and columnist, joining us on, on all of that. Brahma, thank you so much uh, for joining us. It's great to have you joining us on the, on the show. Just wanted to get your sense of the SEO. How do you see this particular grouping, especially given China's heft and the presence, of course, of countries like Pakistan in the SEO? Look at the New Delhi Declaration which has emerged from the SEO summit, it has heavy on pious but empty commitments by heads of state, heads of government. Example, it talks about member states being committed to respecting territorial integrity and sovereignty, to obturing threat or use of force. And the irony is that all, you know, all this is being said in a declaration, declaration of a summit that includes India and China that are locked in a military standoff for more than three years because China has disregarded all these principles. It's, it's you know, not only threatening the use of force, it actually is employing force uh, to change the territorial status quo in Ladakh. Yeah, you know, but China is only one part of those contradictions. There are other contradictions. You had Pakistan sitting out there while declarations are being made about terrorism. I mean, what greater irony could be there, be there than that? For example, talk about not invading other people's territory uh, was being said. Beijing was sitting there. China was sitting there. Vladimir Putin was actually sitting there and listening to all of this. So, yeah, I mean, let's face it. Some of the countries who are members of the SEO aren't necessarily abiding by any of these principles when it comes to themselves? In fact, um, several of the member states of the SEO openly flout international norms and international law. Uh, they know their foreign policy for long has refused to respect international law and international rules. And, and this is the problem with the SEO. If you look at the composition of the SEO, now it has nine members with the addition of Iran. India is the only established democracy in the SEO. If India was not a member of the SEO, the SEO would be seen as an anti-Western club of autocracies. And this has been reinforced by the addition of Iran as a new SEO member. America's main enemies, China, Russia, and Iran are all members of the SEO. So India's membership helps to lend respectability to the SEO. It, um, it also helps to blunt the labeling of the SEO as an anti-Western grouping. So India brings tangible benefits to the SEO. The question is, what does India get in return from being a member of the SEO? In fact, um, the SEO hardly meshes with India's interests. You begin with the very name of it, Shanghai Cooperation Organization. In other words, the very name bears China's imprint. The initiative was conceived by China in 2001, and China increasingly dominates the SEO. It uses the SEO to advance its commercial and strategic interests, and because Western policy has pushed Russia toward China, Russia also values the SEO to seem at its partnership with China. The SEO includes both of India's regional adversaries, China and Pakistan. In fact, Pakistan was brought into SEO by China as a condition for letting India join the SEO. And out of the nine members of the SEO, seven are part of China's Belt and Road Initiative which India has opposed since its launch. Only Russia is the other member that is not part of the BRI. And the fact that the SEO deliberations are conducted only in two languages, Mandarin and Russian, underscores the Sino-Russian shadow over the grouping. So, so let me just play devil's advocate here, Brahma Chalani. I mean, look, there is a certain history to the SEO. It came about as a result of 
people in Central Asian republics worrying a little bit about what's happening there, in, you know, American interference and the like. Um, that may have been one of the major reasons why India also went into the SCO. Uh, it was being argued that we need to play a role in the Central Asian uh, uh, countries. And it's better to be part of, uh, for India to be part of groupings like this, to try and influence them from inside, rather than quit and walk out and then have no influence at all or no say at all. So in other words, keep as many links and connections open as you possibly can in what may well be a multipolar world. That would be the contrary view to what you've been saying. Yes, some argue that it's better to keep your enemies close. In 1971, President Lyndon Johnson famously said that he was, he was talking about a political rival at home, that it's probably better to have him inside the tent pissing out then outside the tent, pissing in. But as an Arab proverb goes, it's better to have a thousand enemies outside of the tent than one inside the tent. So it depends, you know, where you stand on this issue. It's, uh, I'm, I'm not saying that India should walk out of the SCO, but I think it's important to understand, to grasp that the SCO provides no tangible benefits to India. The benefits are largely symbolic. So, so Brahma, let's just take that thought forward. I mean, look, you could say that whatever happens, India is not likely to see eye to eye with China in the foreseeable future. China is going to be a malign influence in the group forum in some form or the other, and probably very similar with Pakistan. That's another malign influence, certainly when it comes to India. But when it comes to some of the other countries in the SEO, India would like to get back to the sort of historic and traditional ties it has had with many of the Central Asian uh, republics, for example. Now, there are interests that are common out there. Even when it comes to a country like Iran that has just been allowed into the SEO, uh, we've had the Prime Minister also referring, for example, to the Chabahar port, how that could be utilized, how India can get direct access to the Central Asian republic. So, those could be some of the actual Indian interests that could be advanced uh, by being part of the SEO or by engaging people through this forum? Well, Vikram, you're right, uh, to a very limited extent because SEO is a multilateral forum. It, it provides limited scope for bilateral engagement. But there are other forums through which India can deepen its engagement with Central Asian republics and with Iran. Iran, of course, is a very important neighbor of India. It's unfortunate that India has actually snapped its energy links with Iran because of U.S. sanctions. And that has resulted in India being seen in Iran as an unreliable partner. So India has to mend its relations with Iran, but this cannot be done through the SEO forum. It has to be done on a bilateral basis. Similarly, deeper engagement with the Central Asian states like Uzbekistan, Turkmenistan, Kazakhstan and Kyrgyzstan, and also Turkmenistan, which is not part of the SEO, um, deeper engagement with them should be an Indian foreign policy priority. But then again, being part of the SEO is not going to advance your bilateral interests with these countries. You have to, you have to, pursue those interests 